Bro. You're not gonna believe who's in town right now in Michigan, all the way from Chicago. Bro, he's got the spider lift out. Oh, uh, let's go see who it is. Oh. Wait, I do. I got a hard hat way back there. When you're friends with Kelfis, you could not see me in a whole year. And the first thing I'm doing is running up with a camera saying, what up, though? Oh, I got a gift for him. Check this out. Sure can. Look at, the, look at this. Tilts the spout. Promo code uh, Keith10 during checkouts saves you 10% on all shirt cans on their website. I'll put a link below. I'm going to give this to him as a gift. Track lift. Look at this, bro. Hey, I have a gift for you. Where's that? It's shirt cans, new design. Thank you. Appreciate that. How's my hair? Looks good. What are you guys doing right now? What's going doing on? restoration pruning on a crab apple that was topped repeatedly. So that's going to involve going up into the canopy, up into the crown, and identifying all the stub cuts and properly terminating them. And there's been a lot of water sprouts that have grown as a result of the topping. So we're going to go in there and figure out which ones are attached better to the tree, and then we're going to go ahead and, and, and make those new permanent branches or semi-permanent uh, branches until we come back again for another pruning cycle and continue. Ah, yeah. okay. So by topping, you know what I mean by topping, right? Someone's gone up into the top of the tree and just arbitrarily made cuts anywhere. Okay, okay. And for some, some context, you're here all the way from Chicago. I'm like, you guys are here just to do one job. What would make you come all the way to Michigan from Chicago? Well, we have other clients here. Yeah, so, so it's not just... You're grouping it and you're doing the whole mall. Somerset collection tree. Somerset collection. Can you talk about that real quick? And, when that's, are you doing that? I want that's to a good longer point. conversation. You know who really should talk about that? My business partner, Brianna, should talk about that because the founder of her company is the one that started doing all the preventative emerald ash okay borer treatment. Collection? So we have been on site at Somerset for about two decades now in some capacity or another, but they have their own like micro forest. Um, there's 250 ash on site and we have been taking care of them for the last two decades. And, um, 250 ash, what do you mean by that? Uh, there are, don't know. Yes, right, so um, the ash are a problem if you have emerald ash borer in the area. And so here in Oakland County, it would have been discovered back in 2002, 2003 area. And um, immediately the founder of my company uh, pounced on the fact that if they wanted to protect these trees, they needed to start treatments. And so they've been treated preventatively now for the last two decades. So what is wrong with the, the ash trees? that they need to be protected? Uh, the emerald ash borer is a threat. So this is an insect that um, was brought in through uh, just various problem areas there over in China. Um, so in Michigan, we've known about this for the last two decades. It's now spread into about 22 or 23 states. Like it was just confirmed in Oregon, I think in June of last year, uh, June of 2022. Some of my older landscaping customers have actually like with their heart said to me like the emerald ash borer destroyed my trees a few years ago and I'm like why are these people so attached to this what's going on what happened I'm not gonna get too much in the history but can you talk about what is that so the emerald ash borer is an invasive insect that came from overseas like most of the insects that we have they're invasive they came from somewhere else so they're native so let's use the emerald ash borer as an example emerald right. ash borer is native to China and I believe most of Southeast Asia and they have ash trees as well but some of those trees have developed a resiliency over time so that they can withstand the threat and their entire populations are decimated. We never had any threat other than clear wing borer. And it, it, Brianna actually is more the plant health care. She's the bug and, bug and disease lady. So she could speak more to like what sure. clear wing borer is. And that's another yeah, insect, but have, that's native to our area, Yeah, we right? have two native clear wing borer that bother ash trees. Um, and like, you know, so you have a native insect and you have a native tree native trees have a natural resistance to native insects. Um, when you have a foreign pest like the emerald ash borer, but you have a native tree like our American ash, um, you know, white ash, green ash, 
depending on where you are, uh, you have a much larger propensity for there to be a problem. Um, our, our native trees don't have natural resistance to foreign insects. So there is a process of uh, treatment that we can administer to the tree. Basically, it's an insecticide, and it protects the tree from intense damage from the insect. So it doesn't create like an invisible barrier around the tree. Yeah, I say what it doesn't, does, there's no magic force field. <laughs> basically, you're putting, you're putting a chemical in the tree, which is a neurotoxin for that insect, particularly for that beetle. And um, the, when, when the insect comes, it has multiple life stages of how it starts out as, as an adult and then lays eggs and all this kind of stuff and feeds. You can tell they're mad educated. <laughs> hey, quick shout out, Ditch the Itch, Austin Douglas yes. actually found his content. Uh, when we, we were making videos. We were making videos, you. yeah. Then he went and got the uh, to the ISA and he got his certified arborist. He did. Yep. He became big shout out to Austin, awesome. that's a big deal. Yes. And so, awesome. if anybody wants to learn about what you both are talking about, how can they take it to the next step? It's like anything. Um, Let's use landscaping as an example. Some people only cut grass, right? They just cut grass and that's all they do. Then they get into snow management and then they get into de-icing applications and you take it a step deeper. So same thing with uh, lawn. You get into lawn and you're just mowing and blowing and then you come through and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna start learning about thatch and how to reduce the impact of thatch and all the different grass funguses and fertilization. And then you start growing and building upon um, the main core of what it is that you do. So for us, you know, it's always been trees and we just built upon that over time. So I love it. You miss me, don't you? I miss you a lot. <laughs> Daniel Miraval, certified arborist, and your name again? Brianna White, certified arborist. No, you gotta get it right, you always say it wrong. Board. Certified. Board. Certified. certified. Master. Master artist. artist. I was calling you a board master, certified <laughs> arborist. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Board certified master arborist. The only reason why that's a big deal, it's just because it took me a long time to get there. There's less than a that thousand. That is a big deal. Well, there's less than a thousand of us on the planet. And being that it's an international uh, credential, credential it, that's kind of a big deal. And the fact that just because I'm Latino and I'm the only person in the Midwest, as far as I know, there's not like a master list you can go to to mm -hmm. find out like where all Latinos are, who, what their exact certification is. But just based on my time in the industry, several people have told me that I am. And when I was going toward my board master certification, I was kind of looking for um, someone to grab some resonance with, like to give me some confidence to go after it. Not because I was unconfident because I'm Latino, just someone that I could resonate with that was like, hey man, I did it and you could do it. And, like we're kind of the same but we're not the same i was looking for that and i couldn't find it and i kept putting out call to action uh call to actions on like facebook and all social platforms uh, linkedin especially kind of saying it out loud like i want to do this and i want to be the only one and or you know be the first one not the first only one, one but be yeah. the first one and no one ever said oh well, you're not the first one there's other ones like you right here in the area let's let's meet or something like that that never happened so eventually i just went out and did it on my own and then so now my whole thing is i am the first as far as I know but if I'm the last one that's, that's really bad, bad that's really bad because I'm hoping that whoever's out there that wants to follow in the same kind of path that I did that they will then look at me and like I want to do that too and Austin's one of those people Austin very much is itching <laughs> no pun intending <laughs> itching to become a board certified master arborist and I have absolutely no doubt that he will and what's really cool about him being a certified arborist and wanting to become a board certified master arborist it's very specific to invasives because he deals predominantly in in invasive so like when you ask me the question of like how's the person supposed to go to the next level you know I'm never gonna know stuff about poison ivy and invasive plants that can do a lot of damage to the environment to people and limit people's uh, quality of life right. um, but he he does and he's gonna make that his baby and then he's gonna use that credential to know everything he can and be a master at educating people about that problem and not just his clients but people within the industry because it's very helpful for us I can't wait to take his course online so that I can learn better what a lot of these things are because even I don't know but then I can teach my crew our crew so that when they go out into the field they can identify these invasives as well so they can keep themselves safe or at least tell a client hey you have this other problem as well not that we're going to be the ones to fix it because there are people like austin around but yeah very cool that he uh he wants to pursue the same Thank you.